Last June, I sat my junior SAIT, a state exam that judges and assesses the quality of my learning from the previous three years through one sit-down test and a series of classroom-based assessments. The purpose of the junior SAIT is to provide a well-balanced and general education suitable for pupils who wish to leave full-time schooling at the end of compulsory education. But I think we may be taking that general education part just a little bit too far. And with the changes happening in the junior site, now is a better time than ever to be having this talk. My name is Neve Coleman, and I'm here today to ask you one simple question. Is our education too one size fits all? And I am asking that question to absolutely everybody in the room here today. The people in those positions to make the change. Students whom those changes will affect, and past students who the education system has affected because this is a big problem that will take us all to fix. So, I think we can all agree that it is time we finally invite students to the conversation where the changes are being made. My talk will cover just some of the problems in our school system and how we can try to fix them. Stress is one of the major problems in our school system and one that if addressed properly could help make others a lot smaller. According to the Organisation for Economic Cooperation and Development, two out of three Irish students interviewed said they suffered from stress and anxiety even when being well prepared for a test. Some students are feeling huge amounts of pressure, trying to meet constant A1 grades. For some, their 100% effort may only equivalent to a 60% test result, while for another, 50% of their effort may equal a 100% test result. We have to stop and recognise that different people have different bests and different expectations. And if we judge students solely on their academic ability and grades, we are missing out on so much other potential. As Albert Einstein once said, everybody is a genius, but if you judge a fish by its ability to climb a tree, it will go its whole life believing it's stupid. I would like for you all to try to imagine a camera from 100 years ago. Now compare that to a camera today. Big change. Now think of a phone from 100 years ago and compare that to the phone you have in your pocket here with you today. Even bigger change. Now try to imagine what a classroom 100 years ago looked like. Rows of students sitting in at desks, noses down in books, facing up towards a teacher standing by a blackboard. Now compare that to a, camera, to a classroom today. And speaking as someone who has been in one as recently as yesterday, there is almost no change. Everything has changed so drastically in 100 years. Our, our society, our views, our values, even the very way we understand things has changed, evolved. We ourselves have changed and evolved. But our classrooms, for some reason, have not. They've stayed almost the exact same. Schools claim that they are preparing students for the future, but with such little change, you have to wonder, are they preparing students for the future or the past? Now, it's easy for me to stand up here and pick out flaws and point fingers, but that's not what I am here to do. I have a solution that will work for not just one problem, but across the board for many of them. We need to ask for students' input and students' ideas. For example, every day I get into the car and get driven to school by one of my parents. And if one day the car were to break down, and if you were to ask me why, I can almost guarantee my answer would be along the lines of, I don't know, it just broke down. But if you were to ask one of my parents, they could probably tell you what, pro what parts have been having. Ooh, they could probably tell you what parts have been having problems recently. <laughs> and that goes for school too. If something isn't working, don't just ask the student teachers. They are not the only ones using it. We need to ask the students as well. And this is not a theory that might work. It is one that has been proven too. When two years ago, a 15-year-old student from Dublin named Tara O'Sullivan started a very successful online campaign to get 30 more minutes added to the junior site English exam time. And in less than a day, she received over 8,000 signatures. She is a very proof that students' input is needed. We cannot allow this to be an exception to the rules, but instead make it the rules. We need to look at introducing some kind of online platform for not just one class in one school, but instead for every student in every classroom in Ireland. Somewhere where they can put forward possible solutions to problems they are facing. There is currently 372,000 students in secondary school in Ireland today. And I'm aware not all of them would necessarily use this platform. But 
if as little as 0.1% of them were to, that would bring forward a possible 372 fresh ideas to be looked at. Our journey through school is mapped and guided by teachers. The students are ultimately the drivers. Therefore, they are the ones who can see what obstacles are slowing them down and which routes to take to avoid unnecessary stress. Please remember, there is a vast amount of knowledge sitting in our classrooms, just waiting to be heard. And let me tell you, they really have a voice worth hearing. After all, students may only be 24% of our population, they are 100% of our future. Thank you.